Hi everyone, I'm Benjamin Yang. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. If you're new, I make videos based on my experience as a biology tutor, and I hope that my videos will be able to satisfy your curiosity appetite, whether you're young or old. And with that, let's dive right in. In last week's video, we talked about how Illumina came to market dominance and explored the science behind their next-generation sequencing technology. However, the arena for DNA sequencing is a very crowded one, and today I'm going to talk about one of the top contenders, Pacific Biosciences, who's trying to dethrone the king. The story is not a straightforward one, and we'll have to take two videos to cover. In this video, I'll talk about the technology behind Pacific Bioscience sequencing and compare it to Illumina's. Next week, I'll talk about how certain aspects of their technology trumps Illumina. Before I continue, please take note that I'm looking to buy stocks of sequencing companies because I believe it complements the gene editing companies very well. However, at the time of making this video, I do not hold stocks in either of the two companies. I'll keep all of you updated the moment I make my purchase, my position sizing, as well as my entry price. Before we start, you have to know the concepts of DNA replication because it is the foundation through which the DNA sequencing technology is built. An I button will appear above me right now if you need a quick refresher. Illuminous technology is considered next generation sequencing because it is cheaper and faster than conventional sequencing. This has led to a widely quoted $1,000 whole genome sequencing which represents a record low in terms of sequencing costs. Pacific Biosciences tried to improve upon Illumina's metrics and the technology they pushed out is considered third generation. Although they too focus on the observation of real-time DNA replication, they do so slightly differently. Although they also require an adapter to the DNA that is about to be sequenced, the adapter works in a different manner. So what is the difference? First, the adapter makes the DNA molecule circularized. There are many functions served by this specific bioscience adapter, but before we dissect it down, let's focus on the sequence of events. The DNA molecules are first collected from the patient. Then, adapters are added to each end of the DNA molecule and the double-stranded structure is separated to make single strands. Because of the adapter, even though the double-stranded structure separates into two single strands, the adapter makes a single-stranded structure overall. After that, the solution containing this circular DNA are added into a special ZMV cell. We will talk about what is this ZMV shortly. These cells are the equivalent to the flow cell used by Illumina. The main difference is that the lanes are now much, much smaller, containing up to 20 zeptoliters. My god, the volume is tiny! Since the volume of the cell is so tiny, it allows at most one DNA molecule to enter into it. At the same time, Primers are added into each of these zeptoliter chambers on the chip on the cell together with the nucleoside triphosphates as well as the DNA polymerase. The adapters mentioned earlier contains sequences complementary to the primers so that the primer can bind to and provide the 3' OHN for the DNA polymerase to use to produce a new strand of DNA. Finally, since the adapter sequences are known, this will mark out which parts of the results are DNA sequences from the patient. The nucleoside triphosphates each have an additional fluorescent dye. Each of these dyes will emit a different color and corresponds therefore to the nitrogenous base that can be detected subsequently. The way it is detected is very unique. During the process of adding an existing strand, it emits the light, but when DNA polymerase cleaves the extra phosphates from the molecule, it floats away out of the chamber, so the signal is lost. Each light signal, therefore, contributes to a single addition of a nucleotide, and the software that comes with the Pacific Bioscience sequencing machine will convert it into a chain of DNA sequences. At this point, the end user can choose between two modes of DNA sequencing. The first of which is called circular consensus sequencing, where the DNA is read over and over and over so that the resulting sequence can be analyzed to see if they are in agreement. This is equivalent to the cluster formation in the flow cells of the Illumina technique. If the threshold exceeds 97% agreement, for example, then the sequences can be accepted and reported. Unfortunately, this method, as you can observe, is slower and more expensive, understandably, compared to Illumina's. 
You can click on the I button appearing above me right now for a quick refresher on how Illumina sequencing technology works. There is another mode that the end user can choose in the Pacific Bioscience sequencing machine known as Continuous Long Read. In this situation, instead of reading the same sequences over and over, the entire DNA molecule is read once. This is especially beneficial if the sequences are very long. Remember, I mentioned that the Illumina technique can only read DNA fragments of a few hundred bases each time because of the way the flow cell is built. The Pacific Bioscience technique can easily exceed that, reaching up to 100,000 bases read within one circle molecule. Wow! However, this does not come without some shortcomings. DNA polymerases are not perfect DNA synthesizing machines, and chances are errors will arise. The longer the strand being synthesized, the more likely mistakes will arise. Just like when you are typing a message to your friend, the more you type, the more errors will arise no matter how careful you are. Imagine that this is the sequence from a patient who is being sent because a gene editing company wants to know the exact position where the mutation has arisen so that they can design the guide RNA for the CRISPR-Cas molecule for the patient and subsequent correction. If the mutations are not because it came from the patient but it arose during DNA sequencing, then this can be potentially disastrous. With that context in mind, the big question to us is whether Pacific Biosciences is ready to dethrone the king yet. Unfortunately, not quite. When it is trying to be as accurate as Illumina, it is slower and more expensive. When it wants to produce longer DNA sequences read, there is potential problems with accuracy. Also, remember I mentioned last week that Illumina's technology is very sticky? For those research institutes that have already invested in the Illumina machines, they are unlikely to change it out unless there are significant improvements over Illumina's. At this point in time, this is unfortunately oh. not the case. But the jury is still out between the two companies and there may be a secret trick in the Pacific Bioscience bag that may give them an edge in the sequencing. Let's explore this in a greater detail next week. And with that, I thank you for staying with me till the end of this video. You've been awesome, and I'm Benjamin Young. See you in the next video.